2024 is coming in fast. I mean, it's, what is it now? Under four weeks away is going to be 2024. You can't help but with 2024 coming right around the corner, whether you will admit it or not, or we will admit it to ourselves or not, there is this, what feels like exciting pressure in a way of what is gonna be my new year's resolution? Oh, I'm not gonna set one, but you can't help but have this like energy that you feel all around you. When you enter into a new year, you want to start learning something new, thinking about your career, where is it headed? What skills do you wanna pick up? And that is what we are going to dive into today. I'm going to share with you some of the top in-demand skills for 2024. Top meaning the highest paying skills companies are hiring for going into 2024. I'm also going to share with you some resources that you can learn these skills, I mean, right from the comfort of your home. All right, let's get into it. The first one that I'm sure is not a shocker to any of you. I mean, there will be some surprises on this list, but this one is definitely not. Can you guess what it is? Cloud computing skills. In fact, I'm not sure if you've heard about this, but between 2022 and 2030, the global market for cloud computing is expected to grow from 570 billion, billion to close to 2.5 trillion. I don't know, that's... A lot of money. This means there's going to be a growing demand for these skills, for cloud computing skills. And the best part, in my opinion, is there are so many areas within cloud computing that you can specialize in. Having the knowledge and expertise around cloud computing, you can be technical or non-technical on the business side of things, which is great for anyone who's looking to, whether you're technical or not, learn something new going into 2024. But what exactly is cloud computing? I feel like we talk a lot about cloud computing, but if you were to break it down in simple terms, explaining it to your grandma or your mom, how would you do so? Essentially, cloud computing enables people to access software applications, data storage, and other services over the internet instead of through traditional physical servers in a back office. There are three main types of cloud services, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Now, if you are someone who is looking to learn more about cloud computing and different roles or different skills, even within cloud computing, I would highly suggest checking out Udemy. I mean, there are so, this, this video isn't sponsored by any of these uh, resources I'm sharing, by the way. Udemy though, I've just used for so many years and I just really trust a lot of their courses. What I do though is go onto their courses, see A, what has highly rated, like what is highly rated, how many people have voted, because a lot of these courses, they'll have you know 4.9 out of five stars, and it's like half a million people have voted. Also too, the other thing with Udemy courses is make sure to check when the course was last updated. A lot of these instructors will come back and continuously update the course, but it's something to keep in mind. Coming in at number two is machine learning engineering. Now, I know you're thinking, of course, you're gonna say something around AI, Tiff, but it's true, it's continuing to grow more and more more in demand. AI isn't going anywhere. Uh, machine learning, data science, none of these are going anywhere. So why not take a step back and start learning it? And the best part is just like cloud computing, it doesn't mean you have to go into a technical role. So once again, if you are someone, I have some good friends actually uh, who work at IBM and they are now data and AI specialists, sales specialists. So even on the selling side of things, now companies need consultants and sales professionals who can sell and educate about generative AI, about data, machine learning, all of that good stuff. So whether you are technical and want to be building this, or maybe you're non-technical and want to be selling or educating customers about it. Now, for different platforms around uh, machine learning in particular, there are so many courses out there right now that I think one thing you need to keep in mind is actually uh, to be weary of the courses out there because of how many there are and how quickly they have come up. I see sometimes some courses out there, I'm like, mm, I don't know, I wouldn't really trust this resource or they spun this course together really quickly just for the sake of getting something out there. One place I would always go though for um, machine learning or generative AI in general is Coursera. They have some incredible courses I'll put up on screen here that I really like. I started taking or just finished actually uh, taking their AI for everyone course. Took me about, took me a few months to finish to be honest with you. It's a pretty short course, but it was one of those things that I was doing in my spare time. And I'm really excited to take one of these courses next, maybe more so on the technical side of things. I'm just still deciding which one. If you've taken any of them, let me know what you like though the best. 
Next on the list, coming in at number three, is something I just think is the coolest job or coolest industry, I should say, or field of work, which is working with robotics. In particular, robotics process automation. All right, so RPA is a software technology that makes it easy to build, deploy, and manage software robots that emulate human actions, interacting with digital systems and software. So you can think of it as a way where someone is coming in and implementing RPA to a lot of different systems that can be automated. So what this will do is it will help humans be able to focus on I don't know why I said that so funny. Humans be able to focus on more of the complex tasks and these RPA systems will be able to automate a lot of the more mundane tasks. So here are some examples of RPA. Some would be include data transfers, processing payroll, onboarding, uh, call center operations, web scraping. There are so many ways, so many different areas that you can automate. This is RPA. So if you're interested in automation, I highly would suggest checking this out. Now for a course, IBM actually offers a robotic process automation course. And I really like IBM's courses actually. And I'm not just saying that because I used to work there. I think they're very easy to understand, really well written and broken down. So I'll link this one down below as well, but IBM robotic process automation. I haven't taken it personally, but it looks like a really good one. And I have taken a ton of other IBM courses. So I feel very good recommending this one. Now the next one isn't completely technical or soft it kind of meets in the middle, which is digital marketing. And this is something that I think, especially as technical people, we sometimes can scoff at, oh, digital marketing, what is that? But there, it is so in demand and it's going to continue to be as all businesses now, it feels like, go online or migrate to online if they aren't already. Digital marketers can have a wide variety of different things that they do. So depending on what kind of digital marketer you are or looking to get into, or if maybe like myself and you aren't a digital marketer, but you just really enjoy learning more about those skills. Some include SEO, pay-per-click, and other in-demand IT skills. This role, I would say, isn't necessarily super technical in the aspect of coding, but it is data-driven. A lot of these decisions are data-driven. So you'll work a lot with Google Analytics or different analytical systems. This is not necessarily a skill per se. There are a ton of skills under digital marketing, but I wanted to include it because it is something that I've seen over and over again now on job postings, even for technical roles, not maybe being directly intertwined with digital marketing, but you should have an understanding of it if you are at all on the marketing side of things, a technical marketer, developer marketer, developer advocate, developer relations, you get the point. For me, I would suggest taking any course around digital marketing that has Google Analytics involved in it. It's something that I've seen across the board most companies use. So I would start by taking a course around Google Analytics. And it's just super fascinating, even when you're building a website and you're implementing Google Analytics to have an understanding as to what it is capable of. So. I don't know, it's kind of a win-win. Coming in at number five, I hope this is no surprise. I mean, they're two separate fields, but data science and data analyst. Both of these roles, both of these skill sets within these roles will continue to be in demand in 2024. Data is the new oil. I feel like that saying is not the new saying though. Everyone always says it, but it is so true. There is nothing more valuable to companies right now than getting access or gaining access to understanding their data. And this is one way that data scientists and data analysts come into play. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly do data analysts do. They use their skills to clean, analyze, and present data in a way that is easy to grasp. So a lot of times you will see data analysts, even at consulting companies, where they are then presenting this data that they have cleaned and analyzed for external customers. Maybe they are uh, customers that the consulting company is working for, or maybe it's internally. For example, I know some data analysts that will then present this data to their stakeholders or managers, depending on the roles within the company. The good news is skills that fall in either of these categories, whether it's data science or data analyst is, well, there's a few things. One is it doesn't mean just because you learn Python or learn any of the tools that data scientists or analysts use that you need to become that role. I think that's a really big thing I want to get across here because what it does do is it gives you almost like these superpower this set of superpower skills, if you will. I think as we continue to evolve and grow closer with technology, it's not going to be that, oh, I'm not this role, so I don't need this skill set. It's going to be kind of all meshed together. You're going to present yourself with a multitude of different skills, some that a data scientist might have, some that a project manager might have. And through that, it's going to make you very indispensable to companies by having all of these different skill sets. I really encourage you not to just focus on 
you know, this very one narrow career path and only learning certain skills, unless that's the way you want to go. But if you are able to genuinely take time to learn different things that you are curious about, that you think, you know what, rather than asking someone all the time to go and pull these analytics for me, I can do it myself. That gives you a lot of power, not only with your current company, but also when you are job hunting. That's something I think that's really important that no one really talks about. I've seen this firsthand in my career. For example, I can edit videos. So for example, I don't edit my YouTube videos. Videos, I have an incredible video editor who does that for me. But at the company I work at, sometimes if I need to make small edits here or there, I will do so. On the other side of things is I'm learning how to really use Google Analytics right now. And this is because a lot of times for different things that I am putting out there, I want to understand the analytics myself versus just always asking someone. And then of course, you know, I code, I'm a coder. I've been a developer for six years before moving into developer relations. I guess what I'm getting at is something that has worked really well for me in my career is being open to different skill sets and learning. And I'd highly recommend the same for you. All right, on that note, Go learn something really cool in 2024. Let's continue to upskill, let's continue to learn. Don't put this ridiculous pressure on yourself though that you need to learn super fast or 24 seven. Just take your time and make it enjoyable. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, future tech, career, all the good stuff. All right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.